This is Larry the Barber Man, and today I'm at the CT Barber Expo 2018. I'm here with none other than Brandy Lachey. Brandy Lachey is a platform artist, a session stylist, and a brand ambassador for the JRL Clipper Company. I'm here today to find out her story for an interview that is to be published in Barber Evo USA. So, Brandy, thank you for having me. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule on the JRL stand. I see you nearly sold out, but you're still going strong. Yes, you have to go <laughs> strong to the end. <laughs> we take no breaks. We take no breaks. We keep going. Okay, I'm so I'm it. keen to find out, you've got a really interesting story about your entry into Barbary. Maybe you want to share that with us right from the very beginning. <laughs> Yes, my interesting story into the barber industry starts off with being in high school with my high school sweetheart and um, one of my close friends, she came up to me and she, you know, at that time you're you know, girl and you're, you know, hey girl, hey girl, you know, you're establishing yourself as friends. I asked the, the and one of my friends asked me, she said, Brandy, who's your boyfriend? I heard you have a new boyfriend. I said, yes. I said, his name's Jason. I said, Jason's my boyfriend. She said, oh my God, where is he? And I showed her who Jason was in the hallway. And she said, oh my God, he's ugly. Like his hair isn't cut, like he doesn't cut his hair. And so my mom wore a short haircut at the time. And because she wore a short haircut at the time, she always had clippers up under her bathroom sink. I used to steal the clippers from underneath my mom's bathroom sink and go and cut my boyfriend's hair at 14 years old to keep him looking nice so no one would think he was ugly. And it developed into a full blown career. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so the, the, the love for making people look good started <laughs> way back. I didn't want anybody to think Jason was ugly. I loved him. I wanted people to see him the way that I saw him. So I thought if I could make those minor adjustments, then he would be as beautiful to everyone else as I thought he was. That's right. Well, beauty's so, in the eye of the behold. It so is. <laughs> if they stop complaining, then. You, you knew you found your path in life a long time ago while she was at school. <laughs> yes, I did. I enjoy it to this day. It's the same as then. It's the exact same. So how did you progress from cutting your, you know, your childhood, child sweetheart? Well, I was, um, I was cutting his hair one day and it had been often enough to where his friends started coming around because he had his crew and his guy friends that came around and they would ask me if they could, if they can get their hair cut. And I began to do it so much that I said, hey, this isn't fair, like I should be getting paid. I didn't know that I should be getting really, I should get paid seriously, but I charged them $5 a head and that was a lot of money to me. So I used that money and I took it home to my family. I'm the oldest of four girls. My um, my mom was a single parent and I brought money home to the house so that I could put food in the refrigerator and you know we were living in poverty so it made a big difference the five dollars here and there it made a big difference um, as soon as I graduated from high school I went straight to barber school like I didn't want to go anywhere else I wanted to learn everything I was missing I wanted to catch every technique I was fascinated with the art period and I wanted more so I went and found more. And again, I'm still in love with it till this day because of how it makes other people feel, how it makes them feel about themselves, how it affects so many people. It snowballed, it has snowballed all my life. And this is not for the camera, this is not a show. I really love my life. Like, I'm so happy to be a barber. Definitely found your calling in life. <laughs> so you amazing. went to barber school and then you worked your first barber shop. Tell me a little bit about that. Experience. My first barber shop was next door to the to the school that I was going to. I was going to a Roffler Moller school and I believe it's closed down now, but th that was a big deal to go to a Roffler Moller school when I was going um, to school. And 
There was a shop next door. It only had three chairs in it, but there was two guys in there, and they were amazing. They were the Superman and Batman, you know, of the city. And we used to go in there, and the all the students on our lunch break, we would walk past the barber shop and just kind of look in there and say, "There's another chair in there. There's another chair in there." And then we had the cosmetologist and the barbers hanging out outside on their lunch break. And the owner came up to me one day, and he saw me sitting down eating my lunch on the corner and he said, are you a cosmetologist or a barber? And I was so proud. It was the first time I got to tell somebody that I was a barber. <laughs> and I told him that I was a barber and he said, come in here and cut some hair. He said, how, how much longer before school is over with? I said, two months. He said, go get someone and bring them over here and let me see what you can do. And I, I worked hard on that fade. I'd never sweat so hard in my life, but it actually came out pretty amazing. And he gave me the chair and I cut, that was my barber family for the next seven years. They taught me everything, but he, he made me wait. He made me wait until I got out of school. I, I had to earn that chair and I did what it took to earn the chair. Like I love, I love how barbering does that. Like you have to, you have to get to different levels to be at a level that takes you to another level. Like it's always a challenge. Like I love challenges. Spontaneity, throw, throw me head, head into something like I'm ready to go. Like I love that. I love that about our industry. It's, it's complete with challenges, but it's complete with so much growth. I've grown so much personally because of my business life. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So your talent must have been recognized owing to the fact that you are, as I said, a session stylist. Session stylist meaning you go out and you work on location. You've uh, toured with many great artists. Maybe you could tell the camera some of the artists that you work present well you've worked with previously and you work with presently to this day okay i i've done um quite a bit of work along the way i've been able to work for stevie wonder i've been work, able to work for a teddy riley teddy riley he only has a beard and he's like he's one of my favorites because we always get to talk about michael jackson and he gives me all the michael jackson stories and he tells me about when he was um, doing Remember the Time, and he tells me every, every song he wrote, he tells me in detail about the relationships and how important it is to have relationships. I've worked for um, the Sev Empire, Tyler Perry's House of Pain, and Meet the Browns, um, R&B singer Tank. Uh, it's, it's, there's, the list is long, but it doesn't feel like that because they make you family. Like I've, I, they're, they are my clients, but they're also friends now. And I could not have imagined that when I was a little girl and I was 14 years old and we had to split Subway sandwiches in halves and, and fours. And I'm talking about the six inch Subway sandwich and fours. I couldn't imagine like people flying me um, across the waters and flying me and saying, hey, can you, can you shape up my, my goatee? Like Teddy Riley doesn't have any hair, so I'm literally being flown to shape up a goatee and, <laughs> and go to a concert for an evening. I get paid, I have a beautiful stay, and, and I head on back home and I take care of my clients. So I have, a, I have an amazing life. Like barbering is, ooh, I realize the curse barbering is amazing. And Four how do you think word. these, well not how do you think, tell me how these great stars found you or discovered you? It, it, it was word of mouth. I, um, Atlanta, I, I'm fr originally from Los Angeles, California, but um, in Atlanta, there's so much, there's so many great things happening and building constantly in Atlanta. And it's huge in the entertainment market. It's huge in the, in the hair market. And a lot of my clients were on set. They would be lighting extras or they would, you know, they were, everyone was doing something. And if I was their barber, they wouldn't hesitate to mention me to someone and pull me on set and let me come, let me creep into the, you know, backstage and, and say, hey, look at her work. Look at how clean her work is. And it was, it's been word of mouth ever since. And I try to do that for, for other barbers. I'll never forget how, 
I'll never forget how the first barber walked up to me and, and said, who are you? Tell me what you need, tell me what you want, and let's get you there. And so... You return the favor. I return the favor. Barbers now. Yes, you have to. You have to. People don't know, people have no idea um, that I've been doing, I've been cutting hair 22 years. People have no idea because, but that's because social media has changed it that way, you know, and um, it's been amazing and, and it's been brilliant, but I'm so fortunate to have seen it grow the way it's grown. It's, I don't, I, I can't get it quick. I love watching the progression. I love watching the progression of growth on, on anyone. I mean, even when it comes to a, a Barber Evo, I'm liking watching this story. I'm liking the fact that we're, we were once in just the UK because I definitely, um, and, and I told the whole team, I definitely made my purchase to get, I wanted every magazine you all published in the UK. I wanted it at my door. And then when I heard you guys were doing here, I was like, ah, oh, this is, Beyond yourself. I like watching people <laughs> grow because it, I know what it does, it's bigger than you sitting behind the camera. It's bigger than me sitting in front of the camera. There's a little girl at home that calls me mommy that, that wants to, I have to win for her, you know? There are people in, that you know that you have to win for. And so I know it's bigger than, than just this. I know it's bigger than just, you know, a cover and pages and color. It's being intentional about quality so that you can grow yourself and grow the people around you. I'm able to do that with my clippers. My JRL, Fresh Pay 1000. <laughs> I was just about going to get into JRL. <laughs> Tell me how you got the JRL gig, and I know after talking to you, you're a very real person, a very true, and I don't believe if you weren't truly passionate about JRL clippers that you'd be part of them or representing them. So tell me how you got the JRL gig and why you think JRL clippers are so great and every barber should have one. Oh, wow. Um, I was approached by JRL a few times and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't catch the emails. I wasn't catching them. I was, I was trying to do life, you know, I was trying to do life around me. And um, one day I got a call, a phone call, and the phone call was like, hey, I know you see us reaching out to you. I know you're probably very busy, but we'd love to have you become a part of the team. And I said, who is this? And it was one of, um, one of the team members from JRL, Jordan, because I have to shout her out, <laughs> Jordan. And um, she said, you know, I, as a woman, like, I see you. I just want you to know I see you. I see you grinding. I see you doing work. I see you pressing. And I need other people to know your story. I'd love for you to check out our team, check out our product. And I said, uh... She said, well, I'm just going to send you a box. You, you let me know. And when, they, when a package came, my daughter brought it upstairs to me and me, myself and my daughter, we opened it together. And we're both, you know, my daughter has grown with me in this industry. And she said, mom, it's digital. She said, it's, it's a smart clipper, like a smartphone. And I said, yes. I said, it's amazing. And I was genuinely happy and I called her back immediately and I said, I wanna sit down with you guys. Like, I am definitely interested, tell me more. When I found out about the technology on the Clipper, I was sold, it, it didn't take any time. It, it makes barbering easy. That's why every barber should have a JRL Fresh Fade 1000. <laughs> okay, so your... Uh job for JRL is education. Yes. Uh, you've just shown me some of your work on Instagram, which I was really impressed with. Maybe you'll be in a better position to explain what it is you actually specialize in and what people could gain by following or learning what you teach or what you specialize in. Well, um, with JRL, I, I teach, I educate, and I also show uh, I show other barbers how to create clean lines. I am really big on clean line work, clean design lines. Um, I believe that it can be achieved 
by paying attention to the art around you. Um, a lot of people ask me where I get my inspiration from with my design work, and I tell them tires. I pay attention to tire treads because I didn't recognize that they vary so much. I was, I, I'm from LA, so I'm really into Jeeps. But when I started looking at the tires on the Jeeps, the, the tread had different, they had so many different angles and variables inside. I said, wow, that would look really cool, like on the side of someone's head, like it's perfect. And then I started collecting tire um, magazines and books so that I could see the tread and that's where Still I- Still the treads. I like the <laughs> treads on tires. <laughs> but I use that, I use, um, I use the uh, trees, I use contrast. I like, I never was good at painting, like color, because I didn't understand the dimensions of color. But I do understand what complements, I do understand symmetry. I understand what the sa exact same design has to be placed differently on a different client. You can do the same design, but the placement would be different. That's what I teach with JRL, that I, I not only teach about the clipper, but I give people an insight on what makes things beautiful. What, what you know, back to Jason, <laughs> you know, if I could make Jason more beautiful, how, how do I get other people to see that? And it's, it's what complements the, the eye. What, what shapes complement the eye? What shapes complement the, the ear and the, the jawline? If I get, if I make a, a part on the side of the head and it's angled improperly and it's not at the exact same angle as the jawline, you can make a person's head look a little distorted and then people don't even know why they don't like that anymore. Or they, they don't understand why it's not perfect. But placement can make something so much more beautiful than people really know. That's yeah, so the difference between a great artist and an okay artist. He understands yes. that there's a relation and there's reference points and you have to complement different reference points. Yes. So. I'm into complementing your eyebrows and your jawline and your, in your ears and your nose. The things that you think make you ugly or the things that other people think make you look ugly. I can make those your your go-to's. <laughs> I'm about I'm about making sure your in first your first impression. I I want to be the author of your first impression to someone else. I want to be that. That's what I want to do. And you say you've been in the industry for 22 years. So. Yes, yes. I've been well. That's of course when I was 14 years old. But yeah, I've been cutting 22 years. And immediately, you know, four years later, I immediately went to barber school. There was nothing else, you know? It was art. It was a way that I could still do art and, and have relationships at the same time. Healthy relationships. Perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And you've got a tour coming up, Masters. Master the Art. Master the Art Barber Seminar is literally, you know, I get questions all the time. It's why, why like I said, how, why are your lines so clean? Or why does it seem, you know, why does it, what is, what are you doing? I'm being intentional about the person that's in the chair. The, the class can change literally because of who's sitting in the chair, the model that I've chosen to sit in the chair. It's not just about having, um, having the best looking model. It's about making sure you understand what to do with this person's face. A person that has rounder cheeks, a person who has a strong jawline. I understand arts, like I understand that. I, under, I understand how to make someone look like art and that's what I teach. Okay. Now that would be a very well received course. Yes, I'm, that, that, I'm excited I mean, about I've it. Had experiences where I see barbers, they see a haircut in a magazine and the customer asks is for that haircut and they're trying to copy exactly the same haircut without using the different bones as a reference. For that haircut, like a mo mohawk for example, for a mohawk to look good, the, the lower sides or the fades yes. might be lower on some people because of where their occipital bone At, is. So exactly. If you're given this kind of education, 
people start to understand why their haircuts can never be duplicated like that in the magazine. Exactly. Because they'll be working off of reference points rather than photos. Exactly. Yeah. That's ex that's exactly you get it. <laughs> Good education. You get, it. <laughs> you get it. It is. People have people have you know, people have really long heads and then they want a mohawk and that's gonna elongate your head. So let's try to find out how to, maybe a faux hawk may, may look better to you, more pleasing. Let's see what we can do with that. Let's, let's really think about you and not just think about the person you pointed to and said, I wanna be like this. Like, but we can make a dope, a dope ass you. <laughs> so what would be your parting words, Brandy, to that uh, up and coming barber out there who wanted to excel to Dizzy Heights? travel with Stevie Wonder and various other artists and get ambassadorships with the likes of JRL? Oh, to any barber, even when I, when I think about talking to my younger self, I, I always say if I could go back and talk to my younger self, I would say, um, I would say continue to be honest. I'm, I, I, was, I was honest when my pictures didn't look like other people's pictures on, on social media. Like, that, my, my pictures don't, there was something about the way people could finish and make their lines sharp. And it's about being honest with yourself and saying, I'm, I'm not there yet. And it's okay with saying I'm not there yet because as long as you walk into a room and say to someone I'm not there yet, they're going to lead you to somebody who can help that part of you grow. As long as you try to keep it a secret, you're, whole, you're walking around with this secret inside of you and you're not growing. It's like op open up and be vulnerable, be willing to take a fall because you're going to fall a lot. You know, you'll, you'll bleed a couple of times, you're going to cry a couple of times, and you're going to think no one understands. But build your platform. We're natural carpenters. Every human is a carpenter. Build your platform and stand on top of it, and when you get on top of it, show someone else how to build a platform that, that can hold them up. My, my, the tracks on my shoes are for my mountains, and the tracks on someone else's shoes are for their mountains. And I, I just want people to encourage people to keep going. It's a very great perspective. Brandy Lachey, thank you ever so much for sharing your words of wisdom. I'm sure, I hope people would listen deeper into what you're saying and just the words that you've said, uh, you know, your advice that you've given them can improve anyone's game before even practice. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. <laughs>